Hello everybody and welcome back to Crusader Kings where we are currently in an interesting position here and specifically I mean yeah we've still got all this smallpox going on but that's not all that relevant. We are currently truced still to Britannia so nothing to be done there but I was just clicking around and noticed that if we were to attack Sweden a, we've got some de jure lands here. I don't really care too much about that. The interesting thing is the King of Ireland has a claim on the Kingdom of Sweden, but also, so does this guy. Now, this guy's 49. He is the Jarl of Munster, which is fine. That is part of Ireland, but this is better than giving the King of Ireland two kingdoms. So I like this quite a bit. If we can get this guy converted, what are our odds on that? 100% chance. Beautiful. We're doing it. Okay, so he converts, and that, of course, means that we want to attack Sweden immediately. Much cheaper now. Perfect. So we're going to do that, and their capital's here. Okay, we're probably best off raising somewhere around here or so. So let's drop our rally point there. Let's raise up men-at-arms. It'll take three months for them to arise. Let's get some levy troops here. We're going to need like 13,000 in total. That's not very many, to be honest. And what is this faction? I don't think there is a faction here. Pretty sure there is no faction. So that looks good. It still says that there's a faction. This is way more forces than we need. So let's head down over here for now. Yeah, there the faction goes away. Perfect. So that looks fine. Now my question is, where are the Swedish troops? Where indeed? Also, I don't want to promote that legend and I don't want the game to be paused. So presumably they raised here and are coming this way. Here. Okay, we can work with that. We can definitely work with that. Let's leave behind our bombards and a few units of levy, probably around 20k or so. That should be sufficient. And we'll leave a siege leader here while the rest of our forces head over to go fight Sweden's army. Looks perfect. We're going to siege our way over to their capital. This war should be done very quickly. Beautiful. I'm thinking, yes, up over here. We siege incredibly fast at this point. Not maximally quickly, but very quickly. We will get faster sieges. Which is remarkable, I know, because we do have some crazy siege speed right now. I want to come up and fight these guys. We may have to chase them a bit. Let's go hit the capital. We'll hit that castle first. An empty throne. Sure, I'll pay the royal court a visit. And we're out of there. Fantastic. Okay, so we're just heading up over this way pursuing and I also want to take over the Swedish capital. So we're going to catch these guys up here. That should stack wipe. This will end the war. War's already over, even without this battle. So enforce those demands and disband our troops and that is Sweden under our control. Just like that. Fantastic. That is excellent. I don't think we have any claims up here, do we? I mean the Duchy of Lapland but nothing on the actual kingdom. Okay, we might be able to, like, find a claimant that would be willing to come. That's a negative. Okay, well, that's not going to be happening anytime soon. But we can definitely start carving into them if we really wanted to. We have a lot of directions that we can go right now. We've been focusing pretty hard on taking Europe. And there's not really a reason for that. It's just been convenient to fight up in Europe. There's been a lot of pretty large kingdoms that we've been able to quickly take over. Now, out of curiosity, do we have anything just by default in Hungary? No, we do not. Okay, what about any claimants? I mean, all those guys are landed. So that's a no. We can check in on Lithuania. There's a little bit of de jure territory there. Checking in on these claims. Okay, so we're definitely running out of steam in Europe for right now, it feels like. Let's check Kiev. Just conquers? Okay. This is a duchy tier realm. Remarkable. This guy would come to our court. Do it. So we just got a bunch of constructions in Kong. We should probably head down over here. There's still some smallpox. It looks like it is on its way out finally, but this has wrecked our development due to prone to plague. So there is that. It's It's been grim. No doubt about it. 
Let's build some blacksmiths here. And in Kong, we could definitely build blacksmiths as well. That's all of our gold gone. So that seems fine for now. And I wanted to declare on Kiev as soon as that guy arrives. Where is he? There he is. Perfect. Let's convert him over. 77% chance, but he did convert. And now we'll just press his claim on just this Grand Principality here. Apparently, we're not going to get this down here. That's intriguing. I guess it's because it's a duchy tier realm. No, that doesn't make sense. Huh. Well, let's try it and see what ends up coming out of it. It does look like we're definitely just going to get this area up here. That's sad. I'm guessing it's because it's a duchy tier realm. So let's just raise up our forces here. Do we need any more than this? I mean, they're probably pretty weak, right? 15,000? Sure, I guess we can raise a few forces here. They do have allies joining. 26,000. It's not too bad. They're trying to attack us here. And, I mean, we're going to be winning this until we aren't because their reinforcements showed up. They were able to gather their forces quicker than we were. This was a greedy raise, so fair enough. We're going to move back over this way. We're going to raise our men-at-arms here. We didn't actually lose anything of note, so that's fine. Where are you retreating to? Here? Sure. Seems fine. So this is more than enough troops at this point. They can stop gathering. These guys are going to turn back around and head over to here once they're there. We're just waiting on our men-at-arms. They'll be here shortly. Three, two, one. There they are. Perfect. So now I'm going to split off our bombards, a few extra units of levy, and they're going to come down here and start sieging, along with a siege leader like this guy. They're going to meet up with this force, and these guys are going to go fight the Kievan army. And this is not going to go well for them. Incredibly poorly. In fact. Cool. They're going to finish up this siege, but that's okay. We'll get that back very quickly. It really doesn't matter. So Stewardship Lifestyle perk will take Hergeld. That'll be fine, giving us a good amount of additional cash. Beautiful. Boy, we siege quickly here. Okay, up to Chernobyl we go. War's actually over. We captured our foe. So we're going to enforce those demands and disband our troops. And actually, we did get all of it. Okay, perfect. That's what I was hoping for. I wasn't necessarily convinced it was going to happen. Now, if we were able to get Novgorod, we'd be able to link up all of this, and then these guys would all be border gore within our territory. So that would be amazing. I doubt we have any claims here. Yeah. What about anybody willing to come to our realm? Actually, yes. Why is this guy so happy? Legendary figure. Okay, fair enough. Is that because we are... Yeah, our level of fame is on legendary figure. Okay, perfect. So he arrived at our court. We want to convert him over immediately. 95% chance. He might continue to do orthodoxy in secret. But we want to do that, and we want to press this claim on the kingdom of Novgorod. Now, which side is their ca capital on? It's on this side? Okay, we probably want to come in from, like, Vipery. And so we'll come in here. We'll raise our men-at-arms and raise a few levy troops. Perfect. So this is going to, like, link up these two arms of our empire at this point. We're definitely going to want to take over Savo, Viking, Denmark, Valicia, Nordmark, Lithuania, Koronia, Estonia, Minsk. All of this will be very good for us to take over. No doubt about it. But we're not quite there yet. Okay, so this guy's got, like, 13,000 troops. I want to check in down here. Yeah, the smallpox is definitely improving. So here in Kong North, we've got heavy infantry. None of these are going to boost our heavy infantry at this time. So here we've got archers. We can definitely put in workshops and spend our gold that way. That seems fine. And then up in Novgorod, let's stop gathering here. We don't need this level of forces. And our men-at-arms will be here in about 30 days. Okay, we'll just wait. Looks good. Their army's here? Sounds fine. Now, they don't have vision on us at this point. Unless they can see through the some of these uh, neutral armies over here. But I don't think that they can. So, let's split off our bombards. And again, about a 20k force of levy troops. And they are going to go siege. And they're going to do so 
very swiftly, while these guys try to go chase down the Novgorodian army. Wonderful. They're attempting to run away, which is, you know, not surprising. Yeah, this is very deeply not surprising. We're going to continue to push southward into their capital. Looks like we're going to catch them here. That's perfect. Or at least some of them. All of them. Excellent. So between that battle and taking their capital, this may end the war. Okay, so that definitely brought us to 79% war score. That sounds good. We took over their capital. We didn't get great prisoners taken there, but that's okay. We're 83% war score. This is almost over. Let's go. We just need a couple more locations. 88. This will likely end the war. And we are, of course, slow sieging up here. But there we go. 100%. Excellent. So Novgorod is now under our control as well. We'll enforce those demands and disband our troops. So we should probably take stock of our vassal opinion at this point. King of France. Okay. That's fine. We should probably work on swaying this guy before he becomes a problem. And I want to check in here. So too many duchies. 15. Noted. Only 21 from offensive war. Okay. That's good to know. We can grant vassals over to rightful lieges, and I want to check in on this too many held duchies thing. We hold province. We should not hold province. I want to grant that over to the King of Burgundy. So we're going to grant that over here, and that's not a recent title either. We've apparently held this for a little while. Okay, I did not intend to hold that. So we're going to grant that away, no problem. And of course, we've now got this area on lockdown. So that's excellent. There's also Denmark up over here. And some of Estonia up over here as well. Okay. Let's take a look at Denmark. No de jure there. Oh, this is a claim on the Kingdom of Denmark. So it's this. This guy is not currently landed, is he? No, he is. This is a county tier guy. The other guy was duchy tier. Okay. Let's demand conversion. 100% chance. And indeed, he does convert. And then we would press his claim on the Kingdom of Denmark. Perfect. So we would raise up our forces right over here. Naturally. Well, actually, probably here. I think that's where the crossing is. So we'd raise our men-at-arms here and levy troops. This is a bit of a greedy raise. He's going to come running right at us. But he can't actually make it across the crossing here. There's also this force down over here. Noted. These guys are kind of awkwardly positioned. This is, of course, more than enough forces right now. And we're just going to head on in to their capital. Perfect. So the men-at-arms will arrive eventually, here in 10 days. There we go. They're on their way in. Wonderful. We are getting crazy amounts of gains right now. I want to point that out. Okay, so we're going to group this together. We're going to take their capital, and we'll see what happens. Only 15%? Okay. Let's hop down over here. They're embarking down this way. That seems fine. So we're 32%. Now we're going to come down here and look to fight. I'm not sure how much we're going to catch. Looks like all of it. Wonderful. That's going to be... Out of curiosity. Yeah, we got 1158 prestige for that. The majority of those were a hostile force. I wasn't sure exactly how that was going to play out, but it looks like it cleared them separately. So that's cool. We'll summon the physician, of course. Kig pox, huh? Okay. Well, we're at 43% war score right now. We would definitely like to be a bit higher on the war score, but we'll just continue to push through here for now. That put us at 60. That's not bad. I actually want to come down here. It's a slightly longer walk at first, but it'll be a much better path to take going up this way. So that'll be fine. 57? Ah, they're in Novgorod. Okay, whatever. They can be in Novgorod if they want to be. I don't care about that. We're now at 80% war score. They can't stop this. We siege so quickly, and it's worth so much more war score than what they're sieging, that they don't have any chance here. So that's excellent. We're at 97. This should, in theory, end it. 
Yes, we just became rivals with our uncle. I'm aware of that. We'll enforce those demands, and that, of course, gives us some de jure wars out over here. So let's head over and deal with those. We do need a new tax collector, which will be this guy. Cool. Oh, there's a big old plague up over here. Noted. Well, we're going to head over and deal with these one war at a time. They're not very far into this, so that seems good. Cool. So over we walk. It's going to take a little while to get there for sure. This is actually within our own territory here. Can we just, like, can we tell this guy to stop? He's already our vassal. He'll not accept a white piece right now. Okay. <laughs> well, in we go. He He's not going to like this. Like, he's really not going to like this. Yeah, he just gets fully stack wiped here. Well, actually, we didn't stack wipe him, but it doesn't matter. We're just going to head down and take this back. Perfect. And now we're going to go take his capital. Wonderful. Would he be willing to white piece yet? He's four reasons away. We're probably not going to white piece him at this point, to be honest. So ticking should be on our side at this point. I'm not sure why we're defending this, to be honest. I guess this is part of the Kingdom of Denmark. That's a very awkward situation. It should have just ended, in my opinion, but whatever. Focused reading? Sure. Sounds good. Okay, so we're at 71 right now for this guy. We're going to stack wipe this army, putting us at 83. And then we're going to finish this siege, putting us at 100. Perfect. We'll enforce those demands and take his money. Next up, of course, we need to head up over this way. So we're going to be able to sail through a lot of this plague without actually disembarking. But we are going to have to disembark down here. That's fine. We'll get there eventually. And that'll be in just 50 days. So that's not too bad. So that looks good. And then, of course, we should go spend our money. There's apparently a lot of plagues popping up right now. So that is definitely noted. Let's actually take a look at the plagues here. So that smallpox is still hanging on. And then there's pig pox up here. And Jacob's pox. And the romantic plague. Okay. Yikes. Yeah, there's a lot of smallpox right now. We did just discover standing armies. That is, of course, a very, very big deal. Sappers is going to be happening very soon. I think we'll go for Renaissance Thought next. Then probably Rightful Ownership. But we'll see what gets exposed after Sappers. So this looks fine for now. We're going to grab this location. Then we're going to grab this location. They are headed back this way. Who's the actual war leader here? This guy. So this isn't actually going to be helping us very much back over this way. But I would like to clear out their army where possible. So let's just come up this way. I'm not going to siege anything down here. We just discovered sappers. And we're just going to hop up over this way and give battle. So discovering sappers is, of course, good. What was exposed? Renaissance thought. Okay, we're going to take rightful ownership here. Perfect. So let's wrap up this battle. No problem whatsoever. That definitely felt like a stack wipe. Because it was a stack wipe. We've got high blood pressure, but, you know, that's fine, I guess. And we're going to head up and take his capital. So, ticking. I believe he has ticking right now, right? He does. 12%. Noted. We should probably put in a siege leader here. Although, we're taking pretty heavy attrition in the smallpoxy area. Although, it's not so smallpoxy up over this way. So, that's good. We've got the capital. And now, let's head back and start taking back some of this territory. We get a perk, and detailed ledgers is it. And we'll summon the physician. Yes, a soft approach is always best. We get the mild epidemic prevention a lot. <laughs> it doesn't do too much, but it is definitely useful to have some amount of disease resistance in some of these far-flung regions, so that's good. 
Okay. We're going to head up and take this area. This is, of course, going to give us 10% from taking over the war target, plus another 16%. So that's going to be like 27 total percent. Plus it'll flip around the ticking war score. So now we're going to start getting ticking. Perfect. Let's siege here. This could theoretically end the war depending on their development distribution, but no. We're going to need to take this and that should end the war, in theory. Yeah, it should. So that looks fine. We will, of course, defend ourselves here. I say we're defending ourselves, but uh, <laughs> we're kind of not. Okay, so we're going to enforce these demands. That's another good chunk of gold. And we'll disband our troops. Okay, so now we're in this position, right? And there's a number of things we'd like to do. First off, I'd like to attack Britannia fairly soon. And we do have some claims here. That's the Kingdom of Scotland. King of Wales has that. Okay. This guy, however, he would be even better. He's currently unlanded. So that looks good. Or, well, no, he's county tier. But that's fine. Just checking through the rest of these claims to make sure that there isn't anything better. But I, su I strongly suspect we're going to go after that. Okay. Before we do that, I do want to boost up our men at arms. So, we've got the Bear of the Emperor's Mace. Can we restore that? The answer is yes. So, we're going to do it. That looks good. We've got a lot of gold on hand right now, but I'm not going to spend it just yet. Okay. This guy arrives. And we are going to definitely restore our inactive accolade here. So Tib is going to be our new bearer of the Emperor's Mace. Perfect. Now that is, of course, max size of heavy infantry regiments. So that allows us to boost up our heavy infantry and our crossbowmen and, well, everybody. We're going to boost up the size of every single regiment that we have here. Perfect. So that's looking good. Then I want to spend down our gold again and go after Britannia. We are absolutely map painting at this point, and we're making very rapid progress on that. So that's looking good. Down here in Bandama, I definitely want to build something, but it's not the most high of priorities. So boosting up our light cavalry here would be good. In Boron, boosting up heavy infantry, which pretty much only means goldsmithies for right now. In Boron North, definitely workshops. In Dabakala, we are interested in putting in trip hammers. In Kong, there's not really anything to boost here. So we'll come back to that. In, in Kong North, we're definitely interested in boosting our heavy infantry. There's no actual way to do that at this point. Yeah, so we'll just do militia camps. And I guess in Kong, we can just build ranger huts. And in Bandama, we could just build training grounds. Okay, something like that. So in Laraba, we're interested in boosting our spearmen. We can definitely do that. In Felona, we're interested in boosting our bombards. We can definitely do that as well. In Warodugu, we can't really boost our bombards here. We could, however, get our goldsmithies. This isn't actually going to help our bombards in combat, I don't think, because they don't actually fight, as, as far as I'm aware. But we can definitely do this to boost up our economy here. So that seems fine. And then in Banifing, same story, but we don't have any men-at-arms there. So that seems fine. That was basically the perfect amount of gold. I like it. Now, we're going after Scotland. So we want to press this guy? No. This guy's claim. He is currently Catholic. Let's demand his conversion. He has a 100% chance to success. Or to convert, rather. 100% success chance. So if we were to declare this, this will only cost us 1,200 prestige. That is not just going to get us Scotland. That's going to get us a significant amount of Wales and England as well. This is really solid. So looking at the kingdom titles here. In this game, this section is not de jure part of Wales, at least at this point. In CK2, I remember that it was down here in Cornwall, but 
that's definitely interesting. We're going to be pretty close to being able to grab Britannia. That said, he considers our faith to be hostile or worse and controls de jure lands. So we're going to have to go after the de jure kingdom of England. And that's going to be interesting. I'm not entirely sure how we're going to do that, but we might well be able to. Okay. For the time being, I just want to raise up our forces around here in Ulster. And we're going to raise our men-at-arms there, and we're going to raise a few levy troops. How much does he totally have? Oh, wow, he's weak. Okay. Noted. What is this war going on up here? Mm-hmm. So we're definitely going to want to defeat these forces around in this area. That's fine. We can do that. No problem whatsoever. So we're just going to raise up some forces here. We need not this many, probably. Where's those men-at-arms? 25 days. Okay. Well, it is time to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we're going to head up and try to prevent this from happening. They're 89% right now, but our men-at-arms have arrived. And we're going to head in and start taking back these territories. So that will be, in theory, fine. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including little ahead of myself here. ALS Gamer, Shadow Wolf, Atala, Ali Lee, Dark Horse, Upper Cumberland Gamers, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman 12 UK, Kentogan, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.